exploring our podcast. Nothing is sweeter than SwiftCast. Hey everybody, welcome back to SwiftCast. This is episode 51. My name is Haley. I'm Ashley. I'm Nate. And I'm Steph. We've got Nate back. Yay. Glad to be back. I, I feel like I'm only on every other like every other episode, maybe. I feel that way, too. I think our listeners really miss you when you're not there, because I've had a lot of people telling us that we're missing a guy presence on the show. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'll try. I'll try harder. So I did something really crazy over the weekend that I never, well, I guess I always thought I would do, but I didn't think I would do it now. But so I ran a half marathon and it was really cool. Good for you. Awesome. Yeah, I figured like I've always liked running and it's 13.1 miles. So I was like, that's got to be lucky. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) I had done like a couple 5K, three mile runs. And so it was really awesome. There were tons of people, like 100,000 spectators, and they had all these really cool signs. And so it was weird because I kind of felt like Taylor. You know how she (laughs) says when she's performing, she's like reading the signs. So I'm like running along and I'm like reading all these signs. (laughs) And they were so funny. Like some of them, some of them were like, run like you stole something (laughs) and like somebody had a cutout of Harry Styles and it was like run like Harry Styles is at the finish. Wow. (laughs) I would run the other direction from that one. (laughs) So then I was like, wouldn't it be amazing if somebody had like a Taylor poster here, but I didn't see any, but my favorite was this, there was one, it was like a really nice photo, a huge poster of this little kitten and it had its paw over its eye. And then it, the caption was like, 13.1 miles, your kitten, me. <laughs> <laughs> and so as I, as I saw that and I'm running, I was like, Club Red, right there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's a great idea. <laughs> so it was really cool. It was like, you know, I listened to Taylor a lot. Like when I hit a hard part in the course, she was there to help me get through it but it was also kind of miserable because it was like really really hard so at the end I was thinking the whole miserable and magical line completely sums up my experience (laughs) (laughs) well now was um was this run just for fun or was it maybe for a charity or something like that like um yeah I just mm -hmm. ran for fun I think they do donate some of the proceeds to charity oh okay gotcha But I didn't do any personal fundraising. That's dedication. Yeah, it was... It took me, like, five months to get ready for it, but... And now that I, like, did it, I feel like I should keep doing it, so I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, might as well while you're in shape. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Good for you. Thanks. That's so funny about reading the signs while you're trying to run. (laughs) I finally understood. Like, I actually felt like I was Taylor, because... (laughs) I was I was really just reading the signs and not even really paying attention to where I was going. Well, you know, when like, she does her f- choreography, like after a certain number of shows, she must just be on autopilot. So she is just sort of like going through the motions, but actually reading the signs. I was not on autopilot, so I'm surprised I didn't fall on my face. But well, that's definitely awesome. I'm so proud of you, Steph. Thanks, guys. It was exciting. Well, we have an awesome episode coming up for you, so we're going to go right into Keeping Up with Swift. All right, so voting news. The iHeartRadio Awards aired last week. Unfortunately, Taylor did not attend or win, but um, congrats to Rihanna's Navy for winning Fan Army of the Year and to Blake Shelton for winning Country Song of the Year. So even though she didn't win, I still think we're the best fan army. Like, how could we not be? I think it's safe to say that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Rihanna's, I mean, that just seems so random. I don't know. I don't really feel like I see a lot of Rihanna Navy fans on Twitter. I didn't even know that was their name. I did. Until I, saw I knew the, that. The I knew that. But, like, I don't really feel like they have much of a presence. Well, oh, well. Taylor still has a couple of nominations for the upcoming Billboard Music Awards. 
She's nominated for Social Artist and Country Artist of the Year, and that's going to air on May 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. And then she has quite a few nominations for the World Music Awards. Those are going to be live streamed on May 27th. So you can go to worldmusicawards.com and vote for Taylor in the following categories. Best Female Artist, Best Entertainer, Best Live Act, Best Album, Best Song, I Knew You Were Trouble, and Best Video for Everything Has Changed. So go vote. And then, just announced today, Taylor has four nominations for the CMT Music Awards. Those are going to air on June 4th on the CMT channel at 8 p.m., You can go to cmt.com and vote for Highway Don't Care and Red, which are both up for Video of the Year, Favorite Female Video of the Year for Red, or Collaborative Video of the Year for Highway Don't Care. I think it's awesome that she has two for Video of the Year. All right. So in other news, actually, there's a lot of other news. Well, first of all, Taylor was spotted out and about in New York City several times this past week. So there are a bunch of pictures with that. Have we noticed um, yeah. that she seems to, like, emerge at the same time every day? Yeah, it's like every day I expect to see a picture. And last week there were a couple days, I think like one or two days where there was nothing. And I was really disappointed. <laughs> she stayed inside, Meredith. Well, actually, on those days, it was mm-hmm. like before I heart. So oh, I was like, gotcha. I thought, I originally thought maybe she was going to go. Mm-hmm. And then she didn't. Our next piece of news Congratulations to, uh, if you guys haven't heard, both Amos and Kara Heller. Uh, they welcome their first son into the world. His name is Jack. So congratulations to them. It's very cool. I wonder if Taylor like painted a thing like for above his crib or something. She's really into painting mm-hmm. lately. I wouldn't be Not surprised that be at super all. Cool. Yeah, it would be really cool. If she does, I hope they show us a picture. Also, some more big news. This one's about Ed Sheeran. MTV announced that his documentary which is called Nine Days and Nights of Ed Sheeran, is going to air on June 10th at 10 p.m. And Taylor is supposed to be in this documentary. So anyway, yeah, I'm real excited for uh, for Ed's documentary. I know it sounds... Uh, because of Taylor, I, I mean, I've become such a big Ed Sheeran fan now, too. So I don't know about you guys, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I never would have listened to him if, if it had not been for Taylor. So last but not least, um, tonight, actually, uh, Taylor attended the Met Gala pre-party with Carly Kloss, and they took some adorable photos. And uh, she represented Oscar de la Renna at the Met Gala in New York City today, and she wore this gorgeous pink dress, long, flowing, elegant pink dress. Um, looks awesome. So It's a custom Oscar de la Renta dress. Let Meredith attack. I wish there would, there would be, they would have a video of that or something somewhere. Sounds like it was pretty unexpected. I really like the gown, though. I really like the back of it. I really wondered if it was heavy. I thought it looked heavy. It was a lot of fabric. I don't know that this was my favorite dress so that she's ever worn at the Met Gala, but I did really like it a lot. Which one is your favorite? It's really hard to pick, but last year she wore that really cool black dress for the punk theme. And oh, that's right, yeah. That one was Jay Mendel, I think. I really like that one. Yeah, that's really then cool. Before that, she wore this like kind of cream and black dress that had a, a pretty long train. I like long trains. Um, Is that what that's called, the train? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. You learn something new. <laughs> Fashion education. <laughs> um, yeah, I like that one too. I'm looking back at all the pictures. I actually like, I don't know what year it is, but I guess the first one that she was ever at where she wore like a strapless sort of metallic long straight gown with it looks like maybe little hearts on it i think that was 2008 i like that one too i liked her hair yeah i like her hair down when i look at last year's picture she looks like a totally different person yeah like especially compared from last year to this year it's really interesting to me seeing how she glams up her short hair into different styles for red carpet events yeah this is really the first time we've seen her short hair with a ball gown so that was cool. I feel like that you. I feel like short hair is a little bit less versatile than long hair. There's just not as much you can do with it. But it looked great. Well, now I think it's time for some awesome mini segments. Yeah, we got some good uh, submissions this week. Uh, we'll start with at Mexico needs red, 
the Swifty problem that they were having today was Taylor is always late to red carpet and award shows. <laughs> I don't she's know if always... she's late. <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't say late. Uh, the last one of the last to arrive for sure. A queen is never late. Everyone else is simply early. <laughs> <laughs> I always think of that quote. Our next one comes from at a underscore mcc thirteen, and it's a Swifty bucket list. Yay! There. Swifty bucket list consists of to meet Meredith. I feel like she now has her own fan army. Oh, she definitely does. Hmm. I'm a part of it. <laughs> yeah, sure. isn't that on your Twitter name? It is. It's right up top. Yeah. Team Meredith. Well, yeah, to meet Meredith. It'll happen. You better take pictures when it does. Uh, of course. <laughs> I'm going to take a selfie with Meredith. Be... <laughs> <laughs> Taylor would be like, what are you doing to my cat? <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel like she really enjoys being in pictures too much. Did you guys see when somebody asked Ed if Meredith and Graham have ever met? And Ed pretty much was like, I think Meredith is too snooty to meet Graham. (laughs) That's so funny. Um, Our next one is from HairFlipSwift13. And she says for Swifty Bucket List, one of mine was to be in one of Taylor's vlogs for something. And then I was for 0.5 seconds. It's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. All right. Our next one comes from at XX Sophie McFly XX. Seeing a picture of Taylor in public and reaching out to it, screaming, I love you. And everyone looks at you weirdly. Hashtag Swifty problems. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's quite a problem. I love you. <laughs> we also have a Swifty problem from at Taylor is an angel who says, instead of saying 100% sure, you say 130% or 113%. The struggle is you can't say 13% because that's less than 100%. Sometimes Swifty logic scares me a little bit. (laughs) That's so true, though. I mean, look at me. I had to run 13 miles. It's lucky. Our next one comes from Taha. 5670 and it's another Swifty bucket list and they want to meet Taylor and get a hug from her and to tell her I love you and thank you for being there for me all right and that's so that's the end of our mini segments so now we're gonna bring back something that we haven't done in a while and we're gonna do our very own fashion segment thank you to T Swift style for all this awesome stuff So Taylor has been wearing a lot of really amazing outfits in New York lately, and everybody wants to know where to buy them. So we just sort of took them by date and said what she was wearing on each day. So on April 26th, she was wearing an Armani jeans asymmetrical zip front trench coat, and it was beige, and it was really cute. So for the low price of $495, that can be yours. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Just pocket change. All right, so my turn. Now, uh, some of our listeners might be confused because what I'm about to say here contradicts everything that I know or have said about fashion knowledge. Now, I still maintain I know nothing about fashion, so I'm actually just reading off a screen. So if uh, yeah, if you guys are a little confused, yeah, don't worry. I'm still uh, fashion challenged. Yeah, a guy, a guy. <laughs> so anyway. On uh, April 28th, Taylor wore a mod cloth, one floral, all for one dress. It's priced at $139.99. It was black with printed flowers on it, and it's a long dress that went to her knees. Taylor wore an anthropology pearly anemone barrette, which is $24 (laughs) in her hair. You're doing so great. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, It was a pearl vintage looking barrette that went perfectly with the dress. I think he deserves a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was good, Nate. It was I a really... struggle, I gotta say. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. And at least with... I just went and looked back up that Armani trench coat that I talked about, and it is now on sale for $371. Wow. <laughs> oh, there you go. More than a $100 discount. I really like the floral dress, and it's at least more affordable than a lot of the stuff she wears. And the Brett also, 24 bucks. It's not bad. On April 29th, Taylor wore red skinny jeans with this striped shirt and a black fedora. 
And so the fedora is from Rag and Bone, and it's called the Turn Down Fedora. It is $175, and it looks really similar to the one she wore during the Red Tour during State of Grace, but I don't think it's the same exact one, but it's still really cute. And then sh her striped shirt was a Demi Lee sweater, and it's called the Logan sweater. And it was $135 from Stephen Allen. Our next one is what she wore on Make Second. Taylor wore a Tommy Hilfiger dress from the Zoe Deschanel collection. On Tommy Hilfiger, it's under the Whimsy shirt dress. And on Macy's, it's under the polka dot printed shirt dress. So you can find it at both places. It is for $169.50. And it is super cute. Yeah, I love everything in that collection. I wish I could buy even just one thing from it. I love that she's wearing Zoe's stuff. So cute. Yeah, I love them together. They're so cute. On May 4th, Taylor wore an Oscar de la Renta short sleeve dress, which is at, again, the low, low price of $2,590. And she paired it with brown tassel lace up tooled Oxford pumps from Yves Saint Laurent, which are $849.50. Wow. Yeah. I loved her look that day, though. I kind of wish she would have worn different shoes with that outfit, but. Maybe like a different color of Oxfords, but if only I had $2,600 laying around. <laughs> All right, our next one is uh, from today, actually. While getting ready for the Met Ball with Carly Kloss, Taylor wore Rails Hunter plaid shirt. It's $120. Unfortunately, it's sold out right now, but um, you can check back at Revolve's site later to see if it is restocked. Well, I hope you guys really loved our fashion segment. Let us know if you want to hear this segment more on future episodes. Now we're going to go on to our main discussion. Well, for our main discussion this week, we wanted to talk about this really cool, I thought it was a really cool and like well-written, interesting article. And it's entitled, Why Feminists Hate Taylor. And you can find this article if you're interested at www.thesnarkwhohuntsback.wordpress.com. Uh, so the author pretty much just goes through why feminists sometimes spew out some hatred about Taylor, and it's just not really warranted at all. The article is really well organized. She goes through five points that a lot of feminists say, you know, Taylor's not feminist, she's not helping girls, she's not a good role model for girls, and just addresses each point. So in her article, the first thing is she says that feminists say, Taylor's music is not groundbreaking at all. And then the author responds to this and says, pretty much, I mean, this doesn't really make any sense because today in radio, the music that you hear that's released as singles, none of that stuff's groundbreaking. The author mentions that Lady Gaga pretty much just rehashes Madonna and pretty much all of the music on Sirius is completely indistinguishable from anything else. And the reason why is because any kind of innovative music is just really hard to sell. People like the hook. They like something that's catchy, something that will make them want to dance. And that's what sells. And that's what, you know, nothing really on the radio today is truly groundbreaking. And so this author says a lot of, a lot of artists just use that one style for the whole album album after album and then everything just starts to sound painfully identical is what the author said which I really liked that term um and she said Taylor has written so many different styles of songs over the past couple of years she doesn't stay the same she changes her style she changes this sonically she changes her style as well and so she prides herself on that yeah and I think not even just in pop music, but in country music, a lot of artists end up sounding the, the same all the time. Um, even artists who haven't been around for that many years, after you release so many singles, it just all starts to sound the same. 
I feel like that's the case with the vast majority of popular artists, and Taylor actually does better at that than other people. Yeah, the example I like to use is uh, is I Knew You Were Trouble, because it starts out with, you know, a little bit of guitar, and then, you know, before it moves its way into, you know, the dubstep, you know, the popular uh, pop sound, I guess, lately. But then it has, like, some nice piano and stuff in there. Like, it's, it's just done very well, just sonically, so um, I don't know. Yeah, and that song sounds very different than what other popular artists have on the radio. Because sometimes when I listen to the radio, even not only does the artist sound the same as what he or she just released previously, Mm. but everybody sounds the same. Right. I could say Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, Pink, like to name a few. I think they all sound very, very similar. Well, I say this every time, but I'll say again that the only reason why those artists that you just mentioned get less flack for that than Taylor is because Taylor is a hundred times more successful and people try and figure out why, or rather they try and come up with the reason why she shouldn't be. And then they start saying things like that. Nobody needs to tear you down when you're just mediocre. So then they go on to talk about how it like when people criticize Taylor, half the time they say, She's too pure, too innocent, too girl next door. And then the other half of the time, the same people will say that she's too boy crazy. And I see this all the time. I think we can all agree that Taylor's 24 years old and she really dates a normal amount of people. Exactly. I don't think she really dates or ever has dated more or less than the average person her age. And she's been single for over a year. And so then they go on to say, I don't see a reason to hate on her for that when there are plenty of other people filling the raunchy, hot, and heavy pop music stereotype. And that's so true because that almost contradicts the last point. Everybody is doing that oversexed music. So why why is it a bad thing that she doesn't? Yeah, it is strange. I I like how the author says it's just the people who say this completely contradict themselves because they say, oh, Taylor's too innocent and pure. And then they say, oh, she's too crazy about boys. It's like, well, which is it? The other thing I loved about this part, the author was said, a lot of people act like every single song she writes is about a different person. When most of them are about the same person. Right. And at different points in the relationship. Which you would think most people would understand that. Obviously, when she comes out with a 17 song album, she's dated 17 people in the last two years. (laughs) come on guys has to be true speaking of guys she went on to say that they say why are all her songs about boys and this has been around for the longest time and this is one of the major things that the feminists will like go towards is and criticize her for is because they're saying that all her songs that she writes is about a boy. Well, when you think about it, the vast majority of music out there is about, like, our love songs. I mean, and where do you draw from that? I mean, just personal experience. So obviously, I I mean, I I mean, she gets the, you know, she's put under the magnifying glass, really, uh, when she writes about it. But, I mean, really, like, she's no different than most other artists out there who are just writing songs about their love life. I mean. Yeah, I think... Probably 80 to 90% of the songs that actually sell singles and do well on radio today are about relationships. Right. About boys. If it's a guy singing it, it's about a girl. Right. I don't think she'd be getting so much criticism that she gets if she was singing someone else's songs and she sang every single song about a boy. But right, it's like they try to put her down because she writes her own stuff. Exactly. Which I think they should be praising her because she is writing all her own lyrics and writing all her own music to fit that and doing it so lyrically. Versus um, the author was saying Pink and Lady Gaga who curse their way through the songs and make it as raunchy as they can to... Well, devil's advocate, Pink doesn't curse anymore. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That is very true. (laughs) 
But yeah, I get what they're saying. So she was saying that maybe Taylor should drop a few more f bombs about songs with her boy about her boyfriends, <laughs> and then maybe the feminists will be happy. But I doubt that would make it. Yeah, they'll never be happy. But the author of this article later on, later in this point, goes on to say that they've that she has branched out and done other relationship topics like um, change, the best day, mean, innocent, never grew up. And things like that that show that it's not about a relationship, a relationship with a guy, but like re- relationships with friends, relationships with parents, and just everyday life. Yeah, and she's been doing that since her debut album. So, if pe- the problem is, I think people are so uninformed and they don't, they're not willing to listen to the entire album. So they only listen, they only know what's actually been released as a single. And it's not representative of what Taylor actually is. I think some of her most actual touching songs to me are the ones that haven't not been released. Like I could, I could listen to her album when it first comes out and know which one's going to hit radio because of how well it's going to do on the chart versus my favorite, which probably won't be released. That's true. Yeah, I think when Red came out, I could predict several of the songs that I thought would be singles. But I, I th- again, I think it's just you need something catchy to be released to radio, something that's going to get stuck in people's heads. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really, that's just how the game works. So the next point that the author described that feminists like to say about Taylor is that she plays the victim or she needs men to save her or she takes feminism back 20 years. And I wholeheartedly agree with the author on this, that her songs really are not about, you know, playing the victim or needing men to save her. They're more about, like, personal strength and, uh, like, moving past heartbreak and ending seemingly abusive relationships before they get too far. Like, uh, that, that's really what it's all about. And I'm a guy saying this, you know, uh, for, you know, uh, understanding what, what Taylor's going through, I guess. So, I mean, really, these are fairly normal things. I mean, they're not like, uh, it's not like she's trashing guys or she's trying to, uh, really like put anyone down. She's really just singing about her feelings and what happened in these relationships. And it has nothing to do with, you know, her playing the victim or needing men to save her or anything like that. So she's really not like a attention seeker, I guess, through her songs. So Yeah, not at all. Like you said, she's just explaining what actually happened. Right, exactly. She's not like sitting there crying saying this is all your fault i'm so miserable because of you and the author kind of makes a a funny uh a funny point here he's i said he says quote obviously you can have a relationship and have heartbreak and still be feminist friendly right after all feminists don't hate men yeah yeah i completely agree and i think if anything taylor actually just strengthens females because she really shows everybody that, you know, you can grow up on a Christmas tree farm and if you work hard and write your own songs and just plug away at it, then you can achieve success. She doesn't need any guy. I think, she, I think she'll be fine on her own financially for a while. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little. And, you know, obviously she's been single for a while. She doesn't, she's not constantly needing to be in a relationship with somebody and she she said that before in interviews that she doesn't want to be that person that is always depending on being in a relationship always having a man in her life and then she goes on a few dates one year and has like a few relationships that they maybe she realized that they're better off as friends and you know ended it before things got sour and all of a sudden she's a dating machine. I'd like to point out that she said those things in interviews before she got really like mega scrutinized for it. I mean, this wasn't, you know, you know, just uh, almost like a a media ploy, I guess, just to to say these things. No, I mean, she said this before it all like blew up into people criticizing her. So yeah. And actually that kind of goes into the last point the author makes Uh, a long time ago. Taylor said she's not really a feminist which makes feminists very angry with her. And so the author says this is actually the number one reason why 
feminist people hate her. And, you know, the author explains that Taylor has said a long, long time ago, she doesn't consider herself to be a feminist because she doesn't believe in the idea of men versus women. She was raised to believe that females who work just as hard as men can be just as successful. And that's kind of what I just said earlier. You know, she really shows that as long as you work hard and do your best, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter if you're a male or a female. So really, feminists should love her because she is just tearing it up and really paving the way for other female artists and female songwriters to follow the same path as her. I think especially even if you look at country music today, some of the emerging females are writing their own songs. A lot of them have styles that are similar to Taylor when she first broke out onto country radio. So I, I just have never understood why feminists wouldn't praise that and think that she's a great role model for females and she's such a strong person. So I was really impressed with the article. I thought the author did a great job addressing each point. And if you have a chance to read it, I definitely recommend it. It's on, uh, again, I'll, I'll say the website. It's uh, www.thesnarkwhohuntsback.wordpress.com. You can find it on there. All right, and now I think Ashley has a little bit of giveaway information. I do. So we have a contest going on right now where you can win the awesome and very rare Taylor Swift card game, which was part of the CMA awards mailer that they did for 2013 so it's really cool it's basically a whole bunch of cards like playing cards that have pictures of taylor and different facts about her and you can turn them into a card game so i have one it's brand new in the package never been opened and we want to give it away to one of our listeners and the way that you win is by taking our survey that's now open and if you go to our Twitter at SwiftCast13, pinned to the top of the page is a tweet with all the instructions and the link. So go to the link, fill out the survey, and you will be entered to win. And that's going to run until May 31st. So definitely make sure that you do it. It's really cool. I want one. And don't be intimidated that it's a survey either. I mean, it's really just a quick and easy survey. I mean, hey, it takes about 30, or, well, it takes about 60 seconds to do, and then you get entered to win, so... Yeah, Some basically, cool we just want to know more about you guys, our listeners, and what you like about the show and what you'd like to see more of in the future. So it will really help us out, too, if you fill it out. And just some reminders for you guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes. Just hit the subscribe button. Uh, it'll help us out. It'll it'll download the latest episode for you automatically, and then you won't even have to worry about it. So please just hit the subscribe button on iTunes for us. And also, if uh, you want to contact us at all, there are a plethora of ways to do that. Um, you could c contact us on Twitter, at SwiftCast13. You can tweet us. You can uh, email us, theswiftcast13 at gmail.com. You can go to our website and contact us through there, swiftcast13.com. You can go to our Facebook, facebook.com slash theswiftcast. And you can find us on Taylor Connect um, under SwiftCast13 username. So, yeah, if you have any uh, questions, comments, or if you want to submit anything for our mini-segments, um, yeah, feel free to contact us. Well, that brings us to our final segment, which is next week, Taylor Will. Hmm. Hmm. I think Taylor will come out of her New York City apartment. <laughs> and her picture is taken. <laughs> and then you're going to tell us what she actually wore, right? Oof. Oof. I, in your own, um, own we're talking, words. <laughs> in my own, okay, maybe in my own words I could do. Maybe. It's going to be very vague. It'd be like, she wore a striped t-shirt and <laughs> some pants. <laughs> well, I have a really good prediction. I think Taylor's going to go to LA this week to go to the Nordstrom Keds event. Ooh, yeah. I have a really, really good one. She is going to get Meredith her very own custom Oscar de la Renta dress. Just wow. for her. But Meredith will just attack it and destroy it. I think she was just jealous that she didn't have one of her own. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, that could be. I think that she's going to go paint a big mural outside in New York City. That would be, That'd really be cool. awesome. 
Do you think it will be poppy flowers? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's paid enough for her apartment that if she wanted to like paint on the side of the building, they would let her. <laughs> I wonder if she's done any painting in the apartment. I mean, it has 10 bedrooms, so. Well, if any of that happens, you know we'll be talking about it next week. Definitely. So, this has been episode 51. My name's Haley. Ashley. Nate. And Steph. Saying bye. Thanks for listening. Peace out, Swiss Scouts. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of SwiftCast. Visit us on the web at theswiftcast.com. The theme song for SwiftCast was written and performed by Sydney and Chuck. SwiftCast is not directly affiliated with Taylor Swift, Big Machine Label Group, or 13 Management.